Welcome back. This is not your typical 4th of July show, folks. So sit down, grab a drink, and let's talk. Earlier, I mentioned the preamble to the Constitution. We the people. What does that mean to you folks? Thomas Friedman, the great columnist, recently wrote, there is no we anymore because we no longer share basic truths. He goes on to say, this anger industry is now either sending us into comfortable echo chambers where we don't see the other or arousing such moral outrage in us towards the other that we can no longer see their humanity, let alone embrace them as fellow Americans with whom we share values. There are no two more perfect people to discuss this with than Frank Alcock, a new college political science professor who ran for state senate last year as a Democrat, and Christian Ziegler, Republican state committee man for Sarasota. Gentlemen, thank you and happy fourth. I, I was really taken by that Thomas Friedman uh, uh, you know, column that was in the Herald Tribune. He goes on to say, he fears that we are becoming Sunnis and Shiites. We call them Democrats and Republicans because the sectarianism uh, that destroyed nation states in the Middle East is now infecting us. I mean, is that overstated, Christian? Um, yeah, I think the narrative, I mean, uh, my personal belief is the biggest problem that goes back to this is you have a 24-7 news cycle, you have social media. It's not all on the media. It's also social media and people are being able to always want to talk about issues. So it's very polarizing out there. I think this is a perfect example. I mean, here you have Friedman, you know, in here comparing us to Sunnis and Shiites. And, you know, they're setting the narrative and they're creating that to where it is highly polarizing. It's a highly polarizing topic to but start with. He goes, and that's what we're responding on. He goes on to say, when a liberal comedian poses with a mock severed head of Donald Trump, when the president's own son, Eric Trump, says his father's Democratic opponents, to me, they're not even people you know that we're heading to a dark place. So it's not just the media. It, it is the people who are involved in the process I think there's, there's three parts to this vicious cycle. I, the media is one part of it. I think another part of it, it's, it's just uh, the information age and what's happened technologically over the last couple of generations um, that has allowed certain things to happen uh, in the media. And the, there are political strategies that work for getting elected that take advantage. And these things all feed one another. And I think you know, at the political level, it's as bad as Friedman makes out. But yet, I think we can take a cross section of Americans with very different political views, put them, you know, in a camp for a week. If they're not talking about politics, you get to see that we just we have a lot of values in common. We care about our our country, our, our communities, our, our families, and so uh, it's corrosive right now. But I think it's 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 misleading. We're being duped into thinking that we have you know more differences than we actually do and, and I think I think Frank's right with a lot of that analysis right there and you know you look at again when you go back to the media and the way the information is as you're talking about it's not just the media and reporters and CNN or whatever it's the fact that everyone's doing stuff to get sound bites and you have like Kathy Griffin when she did the severed head right before she did it she said oh man that's gonna get so much attention it's gonna ruin my career she was obviously doing it to get attention because that's what people want to cover they love the you know sex violence um, you know coverage that's what gets news that's what gets spread on social media and that's what they're trying to fill. So yeah, whether it's elected officials, candidates, celebrities, they're all trying to get those sound clips. I mean, I would, I mean, was that what Eric Trump was trying to do when he said to me, Democrats are not even people? Well, when he said that, he actually the rest of the sentence, I think, was that the, they're vicious against my father. So it was kind of part of a sentence there. Um, so I think it's not very fair to take that out of context for that one tweet. But let's be honest, both sides are guilty of it. Um, and people get frustrated when their lives and their future of their country is at stake. I do sometimes as well. And, you know, I have two young girls. I have a three-year-old. I have a one-year-old. I care about the country that I'm going to be leaving them. So, yes, of course I get heated. Um, but I try not to personally. I try not to get it personal, and I try to respect the other side. And it's a debate about ideas, not personality. You know, Frank, people. you know, every day when, you know, every week we do our Friday political show, and I go back and I look at the viewer comments, and they're almost predictable, and it's very disheartening. Mm -hmm. it, it is disheartening in terms of the language that some people use about the president. It's disheartening uh, with the language and what people say about the last president. Now, I mean, th this is, these are the viewers who are watching this show right now. I, I, I agree. Uh, often it's the people that are, uh, have the most extreme political views that are most heated. They're the ones that are watching these shows and sending in the comments. 
um, but uh, it, it's it's very corrosive it's very disturbing and it, it's a cycle that reinforces itself uh, it's very troubling and we continue because at the end of the each cycle somebody's getting elected and right now it's the people that are you know really get, playing into this politics of destruction and demonization that tend to be winning however it's just not very good for running the country so we're set up right now I think we're moving in a direction where these election cycles continue to roll on but, but we're not solving our country's problems. All right we are just getting started and we will pick up the discussion right after we check on the weather. Welcome back. It is Independence Day, a chance for us to come together as Americans, which has not been the easiest thing to do in these divisive times. Tonight we are discussing the things that unite us and those things that divide us. And our guests are join, uh, joining us right now are Frank Alcock, the professor of political science at New College of Florida and former Democratic candidate for the Florida Senate, and Christian Ziegler, Republican State Committee Man for Sarasota. I don't know who it was who said this on one of the morning shows recently, but it doesn't, they said even prior to the election of Donald Trump, it almost does not seem that it's possible to manage this government with uh, everything that's going on in Washington in terms of zero sum games. If you win, I lose. I'm not going to do anything to help you, even if you have a good idea. It's always been like that, running our entire country throughout the history of the country. I mean, remember back in the day they were having duels. They were literally going outside and they were shooting at each other. Um, I think, again, the difference is right now everything gets covered 24-7. They have to fill the sound bites. They have to have some kind of discussion. So they're moving policy by policy, issue by issue, uh, scandal by scandal. Everything's on TV and everything's being debated. So we have access to more information, which is great but it also highlights some of the dysfunctionalities within our government. You know, Frank, I, I recently saw an interview with uh, the former FBI, uh, not FBI director, um, CIA director, Michael Hayden, who said that, you know, during the Balkan crisis, he had a chance to, to be there and observe really what is uh, the thin nature between uh, the breakdown of civilization itself, where, uh, you know, we, we have not had a civil war in over a hundred years and although we have things like the civil rights movement and and uh, the, the Vietnam protests and those kinds of things uh, that do sometimes pro produce violence um, he, to him where we are right now it, it is easier for him to uh, manage uh, the, the breakdown of, of society because of the, the language what they're using in the heated rhetoric it, it, at political events, in political spheres, uh, it's as ugly as I've ever seen it. Uh, I am concerned. Uh, uh, some people are taking this a little bit uh, too far, far too far, but I don't think we're, we're there yet. There is still a large segment of society, including myself, that likes to tune out of politics sometimes. And so whether it be playing in softball leagues or doing a lot of other things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm not wearing my political hat, I am interacting, again, with a, a, a diverse selection of our society, many of which have very different political views, and I don't care, and they don't care, and we're having a good time. And, and so you're seeing people as they are far more than just the political identity that they and, have. And, it's and I think that's around just the, the country still. It's interesting that you mentioned the Balkans. Actually, my father lives over there. My whole father's side lives in uh, former Yugoslavia and Serbia. I was there right before the Civil War broke out. I actually had to leave a little early because of it. Um, I used to live over there when I was a child. They have some deep-rooted polar, you want to talk about polarization and hate, they have it deep-rooted there. Um, when you look at America, um, again, I think it's, it's something that the news media plays out, but as Frank kind of alluded to, the majority of the people, they care about having a job, getting a paycheck, they care about their families, being able to put food on the table, and that's what the majority of America really cares about. Now, mainstream media and social media and all that, they follow all the sexy topics, but it doesn't really go into the core fact, and that's why Donald Trump won, is he spoke to those people, and those are the core group of Americans. So I'm not worried about a civil war or anything, because that's what those people care it's about. It's a 4th of July. I am one of the biggest baseball fans on the planet. Um, and if you go to a baseball game, Next you certainly have uh, a diverse group of folks there. Once in a while, you'll see a, you know, somebody wearing a political shirt. But by and large, people are still there to enjoy, take their families out, watch the ball game. Uh, and so I don't think this divisiveness has penetrated throughout everything that we do as a society, but it is, it is polarized and paralyzed our political institutions and that to me is very troubling. I agree with you I, and I love baseball I love watching it I love watching my kid play it, and I love the fact that I'm sitting around in a stadium where people with people who are Republicans and Democrats and independents every shade of every political persuasion 
but you're there for the love of the game, and it, and it is Americana at its most basic roots. Uh, but then again, um, you, you get things like, and I don't want to, this is not a gun control uh, show, but the NRA just put out a controversial new ad where it talks about our president and their president, and, what, and it is so divisive, uh, it's being roundly criticized by many uh, members of the NRA and gun owners as, as going uh, uh, too far away from the debate over guns and into political extremism, and that is also part of our, you know, our national blood flow at this point. Yeah, but if you watch the ad, it's about protecting your individual Not rights so in our much. Constitution. Yeah, I watched the whole thing multiple times. And what you don't mention is you want to talk about like government being obstructed and the inability to govern and what's going on with our country. This indivisible movement, you look at the indivisible, they put out, a, a and it's very effective, an entire document, a packet, how to obstruct, how to prevent governing from happening because Republicans are in control. And that's the whole movement. So, you know, an NRA ad or a complete movement of this indivisible movement that's their goal is to obstruct, obstruct, obstruct. And it's very polarizing when you go to their events. You see, it can go quickly, you know, look at one Talking side's doing, and then look at look the other side, look at what you do. Well, no, we were talking I, about the NRA. I mean, I think some of the things that we need to be doing, I mean, getting back to respecting people as people and trying not to, to disrespect people, their values or some of their priorities. We can have, you know, vehement disagreements over policy, but it's really important to start off with at least some common ground in terms of what reality is. And, and we're that losing that too right now. And what essentially Thomas Friedman was writing about there. If you cannot agree that the sky is blue and you cannot agree on basic facts, yes. then what chance is there for, you, for either side to agree on a common solution to the real, very real problems that we have? The, we're, that is where we are in, in a number of different areas, and I don't, there's nothing that you can do until you rebuild some common reality between two sides. And I think, again, part of this gets back into this, this the balkanization of media, silo effects. Your internet, you know, your cookies know what you like, and it continues to feed you. So we're living in different realities that is very, very troubling. I can't snap my fingers and get us to back to some common ground, but I, you can, we can work on it. We can try. For, Frank's exactly right. I mean, when you're, I, I know on the digital advertising side, I've done it. I've worked for, I've helped out candidates. Um, the way you can target, you can really dial into interest. You can shove a message directly in front of someone that fully agrees with it, that's going to share it, and they're going to go rabid with it, um, which is exactly what you do in a campaign. But the most important thing, which Frank touched on again, is you need to have that respect. And Frank and I, I don't think we agree on many issues. Um, it's difficult to find any issues to agree with, but I have full respect for Frank. I think he's a great guy. He's in it for the right reason. He has actually facts, and he's able to debate issues. And that's important to see, but we may not agree, and we may debate when we're on TV here, but when it's over, you know, we're friends. We talk to each other. And we're very cordial. Um, and that's important for everyone, really, to do in the entire But that's country. happening less and less, Christian. No, I mean, it's happening less and less when you look at the media because, again, I mean, you, you're not so bad because you're, you have a roundtable, you're encouraging debate and stuff, but when you look at some of these reporters, they're out there with an agenda, and you see them on Twitter and how snarky they are and how rude they are, and the message and the discussion, the media has a big responsibility. You set the tone in the community. You know, you can say that it's this group or that group, but when you go to the Democratic Party, they have maybe 100 people there every month, Republican Party, 200 people there every month. You guys turn on the TVs, you have thousands of people watching, you set the tone. So if we want to talk about what's the tone's crazy or whatever, you guys are the ones that are setting it. All right, well, let's dip back into some partisan issues here because people are, are, are making the equation between an attack, let's say, on the president and pointing out whether a statement he makes is truthful or not. If you do that, that's not an attack. That's just pointing out truth versus reality. Yeah, but there was like a Harvard study recently about a month ago or so, over 80% of the stories about the president been negative. Um, you know, like even yesterday, okay, he sends a tweet. I mean, we've heard about Donald Trump's tweets for two years now, three years. American public don't really care about his tweets. They elected him after tweeting throughout the campaign. But he goes and he passes Kate's Law. He passes Sanctuary Cities, cracking down on those. That gets really no coverage. I was watching the top news, and they were leading off with tweets, but they weren't covering that. Frank, and then I, I, I have another I question. Think that this particular presidency is just so distinctive. Um, I'm not sure. And his strategy often is very manipulative with respect to the media, and sometimes it blows up and we have this spiral. But I, I think the rest of us need to 
um, not get too caught up uh, with our, our views about the current president and come back. We need some, some heroes and some folks that are actually going to invest some capital and some energy into maintaining respect at all times and then trying to frame things in a way which sort of allow people to focus on what they have in common as opposed to just defaulting back into these tired old frames where we're yelling at each other. All right, let's take another quick break. And when we return, we'll have final thoughts from our guests. So stay with us. Welcome back. The 4th of July commemorates the day our country declared its independence no longer a colony of a foreign po power, but its own nation for 241 years. This day has been a reminder of the values our nation was founded on. But what does it mean to be an American today? Our guests join us right now for final thoughts. And let me set this up uh, it this way. Uh, you know, we have so many cable channels to choose from. What I love about this broadcast is I could have a Republican and a Democrat. You uh, disagree on a lot of things, agree on some things. But so many people today, if you are a conservative, you watch Fox News, and that's your main source of news and your information. There are many people who only turn to MSNBC to watch because they want to hear that perspective. And what's lost uh, on a large scale is listening to the other side mm -hmm. and maybe saying every once in a while, geez, they have a point. I think there is actually an opening there within this again, this saturated media market, balkanized media market, and also within the, th the think tank world for uh, an organization that, uh, th with respect to their fact-finding, are impeccable, um, uh, and they're very careful about how they frame things. Uh, they listen to people's concerns, and they try to do an honest job about presenting, again, where we are and paths forward. I don't think there are, there's any entity out there that's widely viewed as, as credible and compelling to a broad spectrum. And, and we all suffer because of that. But I think there's an opening, you know, this year, five years, uh, f for more entities to be playing the role that you're looking for. But, and before you, you respond to that, isn't it possible, Christian, that one could take an objective look at something that someone does and objectively say, that's messed up. I think so, yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, again, everyone comes to the table with their personal beliefs, their interests. That's why, like, when you're talking about Fox News, I mean, there's C-SPANs out there, right? And all they do is try to cover facts and exactly what's going on, but it's kind of boring. boring. Um, and that's not what people are eating up. They want the analysis. They want the background. They want the hyper, you know, discussion behind it. And then they want to go to social media and they want to continue it off air. So, you know, again, I think we go back. Our country has fundamentally changed when we went away from ABC, CBS, NBC. We're 24-7 media. We got the Fox News, MSNBC, CNNs. Um, and now you have social media, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, wherever, that now it's opened it up to a 24-7 discussion, but it's all about sound bites. Everyone wants everything in less than a minute. And you can't really describe issues and dive into detail in less than a minute on these important issues. Well, I don't know if we solved anything tonight, but it was a good conversation, and I appreciate both of you being here. Thanks for being here. Frank Alcock is a professor of political science at New College of Florida. He ran as a Democrat for the Florida State Senate last fall, and Christian Ziegler is a Republican state committee man for Sarasota.